Griffin wants to crack down in a big way on how many appointees the county executive can have. But first, we have some new information about the FBI investigation into Wayne County. A secure locked room has been set up inside the Guardian building to keep track of all the records that must be turned over to federal authorities as part of the FBI's corruption probe into Wayne County. Assistant County Executive Alan Helmkamp tells the Action News investigators that the county is working closely with the U.S. Attorney's Office to turn over documents that were subpoenaed last month. That we've already accumulated thousands of pages of documents, emails, etc. Um, as those documents are gathered and are uh, organized and are duplicated, they will be turned over to the feds as we go forward. The FBI subpoenaed the records shortly after the Seven Action News investigators broke the story that former Wayne County Economic Development Director Turkia Mullen got $200,000 in severance from the taxpayers to quit her job to become CEO of Metro Airport. According to the subpoenas, county officials originally had until November 9th to produce the documents or they would have had to appear in front of the grand jury. Helmkamp says the county's lawyer secured an extension. We had them as our guests in this building to see the, the secure room where the records are being accumulated, the locking, uh, the way we're handling the duplication. I think in my nearly 24 years in the FBI, I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite um, blossom like this or this much information come to, to a head at, at so quickly. When the special agent in charge of the Detroit FBI office told Action News last week that he's had to add agents to the case because there's so much new information coming in, that struck a chord with Wayne County Commissioner Bernard Parker. So today in a committee meeting, he introduced an ordinance to allow the Wayne County prosecutor to establish an independent inspector general. We need to build back the confidence of Wayne County, uh, both for the employees and citizens that there is some here, a third party that can be objective, that is not going to be influenced by uh, anyone here and can investigate all complaints. Parker also introduced an ordinance that would limit the number of Wayne County Executive Robert Ficano's appointees to reflect 2% of the overall county workforce. If his ordinance passes, that means Ficano would only be allowed about 80 appointees, a huge decrease from the estimated 190 he currently has. Why do you want it changed? Because there are, one, too many appointees. We've been talking about that for a long time. We don't even know how many appointees there are. The ordinance would also force every appointee to present their salary and job responsibilities to the commission, which Helmkamp called unfair. This would require all of our appointees down to whatever level to come to them, uh, not something that they are having for their own branch of government and for the others as well. So that's a problem, and it's in violation of the county charter. The Wayne County prosecutor does support the idea of an independent inspector general. Kim Worthy says, quote, this is a position that calls for criminal investigative experience, and this is what we do each day. We have a proven record for investigating and prosecuting people who hold positions of public trust and other allegations of corruption. Now, these proposals are very much in the early stages, but some of the commissioners do want them to go through as soon as possible. Diana. All right.